You have yeah. arrived anyway. to the, the Blaine and Mickey show, currently being hosted by Brad I'm sure Hopkins. They, I'm sure they heard some of what I was so, saying. So I had planned for you to be on Mickey's mic, so I had turned Mickey's mic on when we started, yeah. and so we couldn't hear you, and I was in there, and I look up, and I notice you're on Buck's mic, so I flipped. Bucks my car. Yeah, oh, 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 okay. Buck well, you just suggested. You went with the flow. Yeah, we he had, did. had Something to. Something Vrabel doesn't do. Audible. Got to the adapt. Audible. Oh, see. You see, you see how that's I did that? Thing I eased that in there. That's another thing I wanted to get into today because <laughs> I can't tell if it's actually <laughs> Wait, the but, media, meaning you and I at this capacity, or if it's, in fact, the fans <laughs> that kind of fuel the fire for change. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm hearing this conversation this morning through all the pundits about uh, uh, Mike Tomlin having lost the locker room, Bill Belichick having lost the locker room, and whether or not it's time to see these guys go farewell. And then when you hear names like Bill Belichick that possibly could be on the move, Mike Vrabel's name comes up as a possible trade. You know, I don't know if it's a lateral move going to the Patriots or not. You know, I think that they're more prestigious trade are, are no at this point, here. just what, given the fact that Tom Brady has won seven championships with the Patriots, but the Patriots are not the Patriots of old. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, I'm not sure if that would be even an intriguing job for Mike Vrabel, but yeah, it still starts the conversation about, you know, change and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I don't usually call for people's jobs just because oh, I don't either, either. I'm one, I played in one uh, city for a reason because that's what I felt I needed to do through the ebbs and flows, but some people feel that the grass is greener and I need exactly see how hard it is to cut so they jump ship but you know i just wondered if in fact that's something that we do as the media starting this conversation about change particularly at coach or or well, even calling for players jobs in well, essence no i, I don't do that or is either. it just the fans but but think about this though has bill belichick forgot how to coach i don't think so right it'd be hard to do so why is his team when he has all the power all the say so over the last years, and now let's just say since they haven't been good since Tom Brady has been, hasn't been there, the last four or five years, right? Mm-hmm. So they haven't been good. So why aren't they winning when we know he can coach? What would you guess, speculate, on Bill Belichick of why he's not having success now? Bill Belichick doing his job has nothing to do with the team doing its job. In my opinion, you're only as good as your hires. In other words, if I coach some, if I hire someone to run my offense, if I hire someone to develop my quarterback, if I hire someone to coach my offensive line, I'm only as good as my assistants. I don't see him necessarily correcting the offensive line when they do things Who wrong. Who hired the assistants? He does as oh, a general manager. Oh, okay. I see that, but I'm saying that you're only. I'm only. I'm saying that you're he, only as good as those hires. His, his I would hope that I'm doing my job as an assistant that was hired by Bill Belichick, or else I would lose my job. But in essence, when he hires his son and he hires Matt Patricia to run his offense, and that affects the development of Mac Jones, uh-huh. sure, that does fall on him ultimately. Mm-hmm. But go, whose job is it first? It's the coordinator's job to coordinate the offense. I just hope that I'm doing the right thing, which is the reason why. You, you think he doesn't dabble in coordinators? Let's, let's stop there, though. You don't think he dabbles and tells the coordinators what to do? What coordinator would take that job if I have Mike Be- if I have Bill Belichick over my shoulder telling me exactly how to Same do it? Same reason why everybody takes Nick Saban's a coordinator's job, because they know then that will lead to a head coach job. Yeah, but in essence, that guy has to do a good enough job at at coordinating the offense to be considered so to be a head coach. So you don't think Vrabel butts in and calls some of the offense in the I'm defense. sure sometimes they have some influence on it, but I'm hiring somebody that I think I know that they know that they can get the job done. Yeah. In other words, that's the reason why I think you hear this old thing. You, you I hear think this these old guys are of, micromanagers real You hear this old adage of getting success. the band back together. Getting the band back together means I'm, gonna, I'm now a head coach. I'm going to hire Blaine Bishop to be my secondary coach. I'm going to hire Brad Hopkins to be my offensive line coach. I'm going to hire Eddie George to be my running back coach. I know people that are at these positions that I hope would be able to make an effect or have an influence on the guys I'm asking them to coach. So the familiarity of people in those positions that have coached before usually is what brings the band back together until guess what? Until it gets blown up again and people go their different directions. I understand what you're saying, though, that a coach might be in a position of being in that position for just a little bit. You know, until someone sees him attractive to, enough to want to ha- hire them, like Shane Steichen. Shane Steichen was doing a tremendous job at Philadelphia's running Philadelphia's offense, right? But then but, he loses coordinators. No, but then guess what? Mm-hmm. No, Shane Steichen left as a coordinator of the Eagles to be the head, head coach, coach at Indianapolis, right? And that's why maybe see, the Eagles are having some problems on offense. And that's and true. Defense. But I'm saying when you're talking about a Bill Belichick, Bill Belichick's job is to control the team and how it runs things. It's to control the clock. It's do, to make those decisions in-game during the decisions. Do, do you actually watch him? What are you he talking about? He has the iPad over there. He's making adjustments with the players on the sideline. 
He is more than just a CEO. He does, he, that's not how he operates. You talk to anybody who's ever played for him. He does not operate that way. I can go down the list of Big Willie McGinnis, Rodney Harrison. No, that is not. He so then why the do we have offensive and defensive coordinators? That's why he wouldn't name one. No, why do we have offensive and defensive but coordinators? No, I'm under him. This is why. That's why he would never name one. Because he knows ultimately he is doing it. So Remember? then is you let me ask you this. So if some people have titles. Remember, Vrabel tried to do the same thing. Remember the year he didn't even name a DC? Remember if you that? are the offensive coordinator. No, do you remember that? If you are the offensive coordinator for the Patriots. That? No, I don't. If you're the you offensive coordinator yeah, for the Patriots. He, did. he didn't name a whole if you're season. The, listen, if you're the offensive coordinator for the Patriots, would you go to the Patriots knowing that Bill Belichick is going to be breathing over your neck telling you what to do? I think sometimes you have to I said this earlier. Sometimes you have to do things because of who you're under, and that leads you to a better job. Nick Saban, Bill Belichick, just imagine, even if you have the title and you're not making the offense or defensive calls, guess what? You worked under Bill Belichick, and they are like gold. So and explain so, Eric Bieniemy. He's under Andy Reid. I don't know what that is. No, he's is. not he under Andy Reid. No, he was. Right. No, so well, why he, didn't he get a head coaching job? He coached championships. Well, that's he why coached, people talk about it a lot. Patrick Mahomes. That's why people are talking about it a lot. They're that, talking about it a lot because he has he to prove to himself a, to be a head coach no, or be available to be a head coach. Right. Well, no, they're thinking, you know, here's why he didn't get a job, supposedly, in the the pundits are saying. Because he wasn't making the calls. Andy Reid was making the calls. Exactly. You just See? proved my point for me. So yeah. if I'm Eric Bieniemy, why I just, would I want to coach for a guy that's going to end up calling the plays over me anyway? But sometimes you don't have the opportunities. There's only 32. So you have to take one. And why not take it one under the golden child who is great and won Super Bowl? Guess what? Now you got a Super Bowl on your resume. And then that And it still lead. didn't get you a head coaching job. But I know that's just him. Though. That's not everybody. But that's, that's not the situation the you're talking about. You're talking about Bill Belichick micromanaging and calling plays and dabbling in the offense when that's just not his forte. No, he that's would hope exactly to hire the right does. guy. That's exactly like, even like does. Joe Brady calling the plays in Buffalo or you know uh, uh, Nathaniel Hackett calling the plays in New York under the influence of Aaron Rodgers, which think, is what the I design think would to be. Really but, naive here. I, I'm gonna give you an example. Even up here when we were at the Titans, when you were on the team too, by the way, and I was too. Jerry Gray disagreed, DB coach, disagreed with the game plan. I'm sitting in the meetings with the coaches there at 8 o'clock at night. And he disagrees with the game plan and says, we can't do this with the players we have. Greg Williams says, and Fisher says, we are doing this regardless. How much influence did and Jeff Fisher have And then guess what? We hints went out there, and it didn't work. And Jerry Gray the next day is sitting there and say, see, how much influence did Jeff Fisher have on the offenses that we ran? No, I, I well, I think, I, but you can't say Jeff Fisher is an example. None. I, but, but no, Mike Je Heimerdinger does not want Jeff Fisher. Uh, uh, Norm Chow didn't want Jeff Fisher. Les Steckel didn't want Jeff Fisher we're, we're, calling we're, plays well, over his shoulder. Let, let, let's let's stop. Hold up, we're talking about elite coaches. He did not. Jeff Mike, Fisher went to a Super Bowl. Uh, I think uh, at that no, time when he was I'm coaching, about, he was considered elite. But, but you're making my whole point is that he wasn't that kind of micromanager. And that's he the was, point I'm trying to make. Why but, would you hire yeah, a guy what, that you need to do both those jobs? Why would you I, gotta, as a head coach, you, hire you somebody that I need? It. Why would I hire somebody that I'm as a defensive minded coach, which is what Mike Tomlin is, as a defensive minded coach, which well. is what Mike Vrabel is, as a defensive minded coach, which is what Bill Belichick is? Why would I hire somebody that I have to run the offense for? I didn't say they're running. I said they're always navigating. Here's what here's I'm going to end the discussion here. Three different coordinators for the Tennessee Titans, and they still run the same offense. What is the consistent denominator? So why do they need Name three the coordinators if Mike Vrabel can do it what himself? What was the consistent denominator? The head coach. See, that's what you're missing. No, they that's were not, the same what I'm not missing offense, is this. What I'm not missing is the fact that there are three different coordinators that have coached this offense. Right. Why are there the need for three coordinators well, if Mike go? Vrabel is the one that's actually pulling the but, strings? But what does that lead it's to? because he's not. He is. No, Absolutely he's not. Absolutely he is. That Mike can't happen. Not the one so calling all the, the coordinators all had the same mindset. They all came under well, the same tree. Nope. Another, well, another point. That nope, they all, did not. Then all three of those coordinators get hired from And they then. got head coaching job. Arthur Smith. See, that's what I'm saying. They, <laughs> you don't go to a team and all of a sudden they run the same thing with three different minds, three different backgrounds, and they run the same thing. That doesn't happen. I think you run what your personnel would dictate you can run. If you have a quarterback that understands systems, and, and why are we still running the ball when our offensive linemen are no good? Hmm? Why are we still running the same system? Why do you think? Well, I'm just gonna wait for you to finish. I bet you, I'm just asking.
Why would you think okay, that, so that we were in the same offense? You said we're, we're running the ball. We're running the football because we have Derrick Henry. No, but you have to have the line. That's the whole issue. That's why people are How bringing it up. How do you know that Derrick Henry can't run the football until you hand it to him? No, no now, you the use problems that you do use him, you use him as bait. because you use him as bait. You use him as bait because your offensive line is incapable. They don't have Brad Hopkins out there. They have none. They can't even sniff your so right because leg. because you don't have an offensive line, you just don't give the ball to Derrick Henry? No. You, you use him as bait. Then you use the reverse scenario. Play action pass. Then you use the play action pass. Then to set up the run game. And do it in reverse. Instead of running the ball because your line isn't working, you say we're going to use him as bait. Then we'll come back second half or second drive, and then now we will hand it to Henry. Agree to disagree. We're going to take a break.